Hey guys, welcome back to or welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Chai Alton and if you have, thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting me. It really does mean a lot to me. Now today's video is going to be a new episode in my book club series which already exists and I've already done two episodes of. The playlist will be linked up there and down there so be sure to check out other episodes of this series and I hope you guys enjoy it. Now today I'll be talking about this book. It's called Mark and it is a part of a book series. It is actually the first book in the series that is called House of Night. It is really good, it's fantastically written by PC and her daughter Kristen Kast. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Now truly, honestly this book is truly truly amazing. It is a great start to this series and I just think it's great. It also disclaimer, it is Targeted for teenage readers and young adult readers. It does contain swearing and some sexual Uendos and passages and very straightforward about it, but the swearing is not overdone. It's not out of place It's in context and it's not every other word So yeah, it's actually pretty good, but it's definitely not for younger readers. Um, this book is 29 chapters long and it does contain 348 pages, so pretty decent sized book, but it's definitely worth taking the time and reading, it is great, and it is honestly a very different take on vampires and the whole process of becoming one. I believe that a lot of what this book is actually about does resonate with readers and it also does relate to something that a lot of people do go through in their lives as the main character, she's having to move school to make new friends, restart her life all again. Her home life isn't the best but in saying that she does have a grandma who she's really close with, trust and loves, so that's a little positive but I'm sure everyone has dealt with a bully or two in their lives and it also does kind of show a bit of the drama that happens with breakups, almost, what ifs and also of course with new love and I'm pretty sure it's something that everyone can relate to whether they've moved to a new school before and had to make new friends, if their home life isn't the best, if they have one family member they're really close with or dealing with bullies or I'm pretty sure everyone's had problems with relationships at one point in their lives, so it is a really good book to relate to, especially for teenage readers. I have read this book twice and reading it now for the second time, now that I am out of school and I'm working, it really does remind me of how much I related to the book when I was younger and back in year 7. I felt like Zoe Redbird, the main character, and I were going through the same thing but not, I mean, I wasn't turning into a vampire and I didn't have the omen of death threat over my head but um, I did relate to that having to go to a new school where you didn't know anyone and make new friends because I went to a completely different high school to everyone I went to primary school with so I had to make new friends all over again and like bullies, you always deal with them no matter where you are and not long after I'd gone to a different school, we moved houses and I ended up moving not too far away from where I used to live but I still knew no one here and I still don't really. So I, at the time, felt like I related a lot to her, having to start a new life, having to meet people and adapt. So yeah, I think a lot of readers can relate to something like that. I'm sure everyone's moved at one point in their lives, gone to a different school, gone to a different job or a different field of work. So it is something that you can really place and relate to a lot of people. This book is so great and as I mentioned earlier the writing is honestly so amazing, it's so well done and the characters and the development is amazing. 
And honestly, do you feel like the characters are your friend or enemy? Because they sound so similar to people that most people have had in their lives at some point. And that's what makes it really good. You relate to it. You can you feel like you're in this world and you feel like you're a part of it. And it is really, really good. I love that it's written kind of in that way. And yeah, you really do get hooked into this book from the very first page and you don't want to put it down. Which is a really good thing about books. Like, I've had some books where you read one page and you're like, meh. Or you read two chapters and then you're like, meh, boy. Where with this, you... I found myself having to put the book down at some point, but I really, really didn't want to. So I like that about books. I like that when they keep you wanting to read and find out more. Which... So yeah, if you want a book that you'll get hooked into, definitely get this one. Now I am going to read the back of the book like I do in all my other episodes, just because I don't want to give away too many details or too much information in case you guys would like to get this book and read it yourselves and find out through the book and not through me. So I'm not going to have any hashtag spoiler alerts on me. Don't want that. Don't want that responsibility and don't want that guilt. But yeah, so it's really, what's really interesting about this is that the very first um, passage at the top is actually a passage within the book but because it's on the back and not with everything else it kind of almost sounds like a diary entry whereas when it's with everything in the book it doesn't because everything is in Zoe's POV point of view so yeah let's get into that So the bad news was that I'd have to move into the House of Night, a private boarding school known by all my friends as the Vampire Finishing School, where I would spend the next four years going through bizarre and unnameable physical changes, as well as a total and permanent life shake-up, and that's only if the whole process didn't kill me. But the good news was that I wouldn't have to take that geometry test tomorrow. When 16-year-old Zoe is marked by the tracker, she knows her old life is over. Now she has to leave her friends and family to join the House of Night School, where there's only one subject Zoe needs to study, Vampire 101. Of course, there's always a catch, and this one's nice and simple. If you fail, you die. So this is the only book in this series that I have read. I am planning on getting all of the rest of the books and doing book club episodes on them as well. So if you would like to see that, comment down below and tell me and also tell me other books you would like me to review for the book club series. I'm happy to take all, any and all books apart from Fifty Shades of Grey. Don't want to read that. Didn't even want to watch a movie, don't want to read it. But yeah. so. As for this House of Night series, there are 11 books in this particular series, but there are also 4 additional books that are still in the same universe, but not a part of this actual um, series. So yeah, I'm planning on doing a lot more episodes with this book series, House of Night. I honestly love it. But yeah, um, if you have read this book, Please comment down below what you thought of it. I honestly thought it was amazing and I love it. And I believe you truly get hooked into it from the very first page. Anyways, that is all for today's episode of Book Club. If you decide to get this book, once you have read it, come back to this video and comment down below what you thought of it and what you think will happen in the next book or throughout the series. Because I'm curious to know what you guys think and I'm curious to see if any of our predictions turn out to be correct. So anyways, that is today's episode of Book Club and I will have some links down below for where you can buy this amazing book. I truly think it should be a part of everyone's book collection. It is great. And please remember to stay safe during this trying time. 
please stay home if you can and please please do not go out if you're sick or go to work very bad and when you do go out if you have to please try and stay 1.5 meters away from people that you do not live with and of course wash your hands as often as possible when you cough don't cough into your hand cough into your elbow same as sneezing and yeah Australia might be doing very well with not having too many COVID-19 cases touch wood hopefully it doesn't get worse but please adhere to the rules where you live and don't go breaking them don't think you're being cool because you're not you're honestly just putting more people at risk and making lockdown and restrictions last longer for those of us doing the right thing so please be careful and especially if you're in Melbourne or Victoria stay the fuck home I cannot repeat this enough time stay the fuck home I'm tempted to make merch like pop sockets phone cases maybe even shirts and beanies that say stay the fuck home anyway that is all for today's video I love you guys and I'll see you next time Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a video because notifications are really important at the moment because, you know, how else do you know when people upload? Especially me, my schedule is a bit out of whack. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!